All right, welcome back, crime fighters, for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place by helping us lock up the bad guys. I'm Chris Wright, along with our Chief Deputy, John Garlick. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Good to see everybody yeah. out there mm -hmm. again. We appreciate everybody joining us every uh, okay. every week here for this show and sharing information with us and, and listening to the information that we have to share. Absolutely, and you know, we have another, uh, another three people arrested last week due to the diligent performance of our citizens of Calhoun County calling it in. So our count's 4,343. And, and just like magic, somehow we, we've never gone a week where we didn't have somebody that uh, was located thanks to our That's viewers. Right. We've also never gone a week where we say, ooh, we don't have anybody to put up on the lineup. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately that's probably never going to happen mm -hmm. and that number will keep going. But the good news is that that 4,000 number keeps going up. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are people brought to justice. The system works. And, and in some cases, it's a very simple process once we get them in and you can take care of something that, that's not a huge deal for them or anybody else, but it's something that right. by law you've got to track down. Absolutely. You know, somebody who files a report and they, they go and get a warrant, it could be a misdemeanor, it could be a felony. And, you know, sometimes you can't clear that warrant up, even if you didn't do it. I'm not, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You can't even begin that process until you've been arrested. And then you can arrest and you can bond out, and then you'll have your day in court. But you can't clean it up. If you've got an outstanding warrant, turn yourself in. Let's get the ball rolling and, and get it cleared. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, the rain that we've had here and the flooding oh, that, that's happened. A lot of people have seen sunshine for a couple of days and, and haven't had any rain for a little while, and I think it's all over. And, and in most parts of Calhoun County, it is right. over at this point. But along the riverbanks of the Coosa, that's not the case. That's right. It's still flooding. That water is coming down from wherever it comes from, and the rivers and the, and the lakes are still overflowing and flooding, and it's dangerous. And the ground is soft. It's slippery. If you're out there on the lake this weekend fishing or hanging out with your kids, be careful because you can slip, and that water may be running fast mm -hmm. and be running deep. And some places where you don't think there would be flooding, you don't even realize how close it is to the river until you, an event like this happens, and then you see, okay, the river's kind of moved. Yeah, and the water table's high, so any rain we get, any rain we get is going to cause a little bit more flooding. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be alert. Yep. yep. Turn around, don't drown. If you are uh, on the road and you see some, uh, some water flowing over the road, do not try to drive through it. Uh, you'd be surprised at how easily it can uh, start moving your vehicle and get you out of control. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up on our lineup this week, Eric Stevens. Mr. Stevens, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted for bond revocations on possession of a controlled substance, obstruction of governmental operations, and possession of marijuana second. Then we'd like you to meet Matthew Watkins. Mr. Watkins, last known to be living in Bessemer, He's wanted for a probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. And this is Joseph Holloway. Mr. Holloway, last known to be living in Talladega, he's wanted on a probation revocation for obstruction of justice by using a false identity. And meet Evan Lyles. Mr. Lyles, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana first. Take a look at Heath Carr. Mr. Carr, last known to be living in Wellington, he's wanted for criminal mischief second. And last up for the first half of our lineup, Samantha Hill Fleming. Ms. Hill Fleming, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted for probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. I'll have the second half of the lineup in uh, just a few minutes, but. Uh... John, unfortunately, as we see every week in the lineup, uh, drugs, they've been a problem for a while. They're still a problem. Doesn't look like that's going to be changing anytime right. soon. Drugs are a huge problem. And synthetic drugs are a huge problem. Prescription drugs, any drugs are a real big problem. And um, kids are getting younger and younger when they're getting addicted. And it just damages the brain permanently, and it's bad. 
bad. Very bad. Jason Lindell is joining us from the Agency for Substance Abuse Prevention. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Got an event coming up here uh, very soon that uh, can help shed some light on uh, the current situation with opioids in our community and, and how we can move forward, right? Correct. Uh, Tuesday, March 5th at uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Oxford Civic Center, we're having an opioid roundtable. It's a free event. You don't have to register. Matas is, uh, is uh, catering. Oh, wow. So at least come out and get some good Matas. Ooh. But it's, uh, it's a time to kind of get informed about the opioid, ask questions, get answers about the opioid epidemic here in Calhoun County. All right, so is this, this is something that would be good for parents, for teachers, for Teachers, who? nurses, uh, parents, like you said, grandparents, your average ordinary citizens, because as John mentioned, kids are just younger and younger that are, are exposed to it or know more about it. So anybody and everybody's welcome to come out. Right. And it's a terrible problem. I mean, we, we need nurses and doctors, mm -hmm. professionals to show up too, because you know, mm -hmm. scripting some of the, some of these are valid scripts that people are perpetuating and, and, they need to be fixed. and in some cases the uh, the doctors are, are the problem and I don't know that that's the case with anybody locally mm -hmm. but I just saw a story the other day of a, a dentist that was providing dental care to patients that didn't have insurance and couldn't afford the dental care he would work on their dental needs and give them a prescription but require them to go fill that prescription and bring the uh, the drugs back to him or give them to somebody else that he'd sold them to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, and even the, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal a couple of weeks ago about the pharmaceutical company. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to think of their name, but it was a family business. They'd been purposely promoting their opiate drugs and they knew they were addictive and they mm -hmm. were minimizing the addiction. It was Oxycontin. They minimized yeah. the addiction and uh, they were happy about that and made billions Billions, and now there being uh, some criminal cases against them. Yeah, that's, that's going to be played out in, in court here, and, and we'll see what happens with that. But regardless of, you know, where it is up there on that high level where the, the big players are dealing with, with that, here in Calhoun County, what are we dealing with right now? We see a lot of, as John said, uh, parents or grandparents, they don't lock them up, so kids have free access to going through cabinets, medicine cabinets. Um, all sorts of, whether it be Vicodin, Oxycontin, and it's not just the pain medicines. We're seeing a lot of the benzodiazepines, the Xanax is extremely popular. Um, so any any type of prescription meds, uh, keep them safe place where kids can't, whether it be young kids, whether it be teenagers or, or older, keep them locked up and taken care of. Or better yet, don't keep them if you don't need them anymore. Right, yes. we've, we've got a also prescription, National Prescription Drug Tape Back is April 27th, Saturday, April 27th. We partnered with the Sheriff's Department. Um, we've got three locations, CVS in Oxford, Walgreens in Anderson, and Walgreens in Jacksonville, that if you have unused, old, expired medications, you can come uh, get rid of them safely Conveniently, if that date does not work for you, there's a drop box in the, in the lobby of the Sheriff's Department, Oxford Police Department, Anderson Police Department, Jacksonville Police Department. All these locations have where 365 days of the year you can bring old expired medication and, and get rid of them safely. And instead make it of flushing. Easy to do that, and the reason is we don't want you flushing them down the <coughs> toilet and mm -hmm. washing them down the sink because, believe it or not, it gets in the groundwater and is bad for the environment. Correct. And, and people forget that they have these things. I just recently had some dental work done myself and was prescribed some pills and I took two or three of them. The rest of them did Perfect. not. Now I've got them put in a safe place, but I'm gonna now get rid of those. But you know, you don't immediately say, I don't need this anymore and get rid of it. You have that process of, well, okay, I don't need it today but I'm not ready to get rid of it yet. And then next thing you know, you've forgotten it. And a lot of people have these things sitting around their house. A lot of people like myself with kids. Yeah. And you know, kids, kids like to learn about stuff and they think it's cool to learn about drugs. So they'll, they'll become like these, these internet gurus about drugs and go to school and brag about it. But then purely innocent, kids will see their parents and other adults taking pills and they'll go, well, they're taking that pill, they're taking that Xanax, they're taking whatever, and it's helping them. And they'll think, well, they're not going to hurt me. 
And so I'll just take it to school and take it, or I'll be cool and bring this pill to school and give it to somebody, not thinking really that it's going to hurt them, but they're being cool, and kids can die from that stuff. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, we need to take a quick break, but we want to talk some more about this roundtable that's coming up here in just a second. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with the second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Glenn Morris. Mr. Morris, last known to be living in Jacksonville. He's wanted for a probation violation on possession of a forged instrument first. And this is Jody Cheatwood. Mr. Cheatwood, last known to be living in Delta. He's wanted for a probation revocation on theft of property second and destroying state property by an inmate. And meet Octavio Lopez. Mr. Lopez, last known to be living in Widawi, he's wanted for probation violation on possession of a forged instrument. And we'd like you to take a look at Riley DeMille. Miss DeMille, last known to be living in Heflin, she's wanted on a probation revocation for illegal possession of prescription drugs and use in possession of drug paraphernalia. And this is Brandon McCurdy. Mr. McCurdy, last known to be living in Gadsden, he's wanted for failure to appear on obstruction of justice by using a false identity and possession of marijuana first. And last up in our lineup this week, Marty Kirby. Mr. Kirby, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for domestic violence third harassment. And that's it for our lineup this week. If you know the whereabouts of these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number, 256-238-1414. All right, we'll have the Crime Stoppers segment here in just a few minutes. We've got uh, several crimes that we need your help solving. But uh, right now we're talking about opioids. Jason Lindell is our guest from the Agency for Substance Abuse Prevention. We've got the round table coming up on Tuesday, March the 5th, yeah. is it? Yes, at sir. the Oxford Civic Center. Uh, you were just telling us off the air some statistics that were, I, I knew that we had a problem that was growing. I didn't realize quite how quickly it was growing. Apparently, the opioid overdose deaths doubled recently? Anderson Star put out a statistic a few months ago that back in 2016, the opioid deaths were 15 for Calhoun County opioid uh, overdose deaths. 2017, it went from 15 all the way to 30, so 100% increase. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, we don't have our numbers out for 2018 yet, but we're looking at consider another high 30, I mean, not a high 30s, but in the 30s as well, which is something that, as you said, as a lifelong Calhoun County resident, that to me, that sounds like bigger city numbers. Well, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's higher because just in, without knowing what the numbers are, I know that just in, in the sheriff's office, we have ex experienced overdose deaths seems like they're more last year than they were before. And, just. and that's, that's just the deaths, which obviously are the easiest thing to, right. to count and, and quantify and, and, and obviously the ultimate price that's being paid. But there are so many other overdoses that, that, don't, that don't end in death, but right. still have very tragic consequences. Right, right. The health issues that come from it, um, the devastating effect. I, a lot of times we work in, in the schools in dealing with middle school kids and to hear their stories of family members, whether it be parents or grandparents, but or extended family, to hear the price that they pay for an overdose death is is tremendous. And unfortunately, these we hear those week in and week out. And uh, like John said earlier, unfortunately, it's not getting much better. So we're with the round table. We hope to bring the information to the people and the, to the community to make them more aware. Who are some of the people we're going to hear from at the round table? Uh, sheriff, we've got a panel. Sheriff uh, Matthew Wade will be there. We've got a physician. Um, we've got, we're partnering with Bradford, um, the JSU Community Recovery Center. So we're gonna have people from JSU, Anderson Fellowship House, and then Self Recovery Program. Different aspects of the prevention. If someone's already addicted, where they can go to get help and treatment, and then hope or detox and then treatment, because it's it's a process. I mean, we work in prevention. We try to educate you so you don't start. But if you've already got someone who's hooked, we try to get you into treatment and take care of that, and then recovery. It's it's a unfortunately a, a process. And recovery, and it's, it's it's so important, particularly when you're talking to kids, 
you know, a lot of kids are really naive when it comes to any kind of drugs. And they think, well, you know, I, I won't get addicted. And then if, even if I do, I can just go to a 21-day rehab, and I'm fine after that. And so recovery is a lifelong thing. Absolutely. The damage caused by the prescription drugs or the street drugs is permanent. It's permanent brain damage. It's permanently altering your personality. It could alter your muscles. It could alter everything. But that you're going to have to learn to live with a disability caused by your drug use, and it doesn't even have to be long term it can be one hit and something bad's going to happen to your brain so it's really important I had a conversation with a guy who overdosed three times and went to recovery and detox but he he made a statement to thee that he is an addict but in a recovered state and like you said i think he will always struggle because he is an addict but fortunately he is in a recovered state which it is important though that we, we do recognize there are success stories like that 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 mm -hmm. It's not an ending, right? But right. it's a it's a new beginning when somebody overcomes that addiction to the level where they're able to get back into their life. I've got a friend that uh, that I knew as a teenager. We lost touch, and over the years, I didn't realize she had become addicted to pain pills and went through multiple rehabs and different homes. It all ruined every relationship in her life, and for years and years, separated from her son. All this. For the last several years, she's been clean, and, and just every day, it's such a joy when I see her on Facebook posting mm -hmm. just a normal post. Yep. I mean, it's beautiful. So it's important that people realize that, yeah, you can get back to that. You still have to be very careful. You do. You do. Because I, I started a, a kind of a personal, because Calhoun County kid, list of individuals who I knew. So I've got a list of 11 or 10 people that I grew up with. And all 11 or 12 of them passed away of either prescription drug overdose or heroin overdose. None of them made it to their 30s is the sad part. And that's why, again, passionate about this subject, want to get the, the word out and continue to. to well, Thank you very much, Jason. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate you having And uh, if folks need to reach out to you, I'm sure they can do that as well. Absolutely, but, absolutely. Uh, Tuesday, March 5th at the Oxford Civic Center for the, uh, the round table for opioids if you want to go find out more. Uh, we'll be right back with the Crime Stoppers segment of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask you to help our investigators with the following cases. First up, between 7.15 p.m. on February 12th and 8 a.m. on February 13th, the 2015 blue Nissan Versa Noten Color was stolen from a residence on Jewel Road in Oxford. The car has damage to the front passenger side fender and bumper. And sometime between February 13th and February 14th, an Outback brand car hauler was taken from a location on US Highway 431 in Alexandria. This car hauler has had numerous modifications to include a Craftsman toolbox on the front and a spare tire mounted on the front floor of the trailer. And sometime between February 13th and February 15th, a catalytic converter was stolen from a bus at a location on Mount Zion Church Road in Alexandria. And between February 14th and February 18th, a black gated utility trailer was stolen from a residence on Chakalaka Road in Anniston. And sometime between February 15th and February 16th, someone broke into a concession stand located on Pinson Road in Anniston. Damage was done to the windows and doors and a large quantity of candy was stolen. And on February 19th, an unknown person attempted to break into a home on Wildwood Drive in Jacksonville. And last up on your caseload this week, sometime between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. on February 20th, a home was burglarized on Cochran Springs Road in Ohatchee. Six firearms were taken from that location. And that's it for the Crime Stoppers cases this week. If you have information on these cases, and please, we hope you do, give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number, 256-238-1414. Remember, we want your information and not your name. Stop it! Y'all so stupid! Uh, today, John, we've got a story about a, uh, a lady that unfortunately got scammed. Uh oh. And she called the police to report that uh, she paid over $260 uh, 
and got brown sugar instead. Hmm. And of course, the question from the police was, instead of what? Right. Cocaine. I see. <laughs> you know, that happens quite a bit, that people just report, you know, I got robbed buying drugs. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it, it may surprise some people, but uh, drug dealers, not always the most honest people out there. No, not at all. And no. she's probably lucky that she got brown sugar and not, uh, you know, something that was more poisonous mm -hmm. than, uh, I can imagine, heroin. But yeah, still, wow. So, don't do bad things. If you're doing the right things and somebody scams you, you can yeah. call the sheriff's office and they'll try to help you. Not always successfully, but always do their best. Well, even if you're doing the wrong thing, if you're getting, I mean, they stole her money, that was still a crime. Yeah. And please do report she it. She just implicated herself in another crime, but that's fine. There you go. We're we, here to help. We do appreciate you reporting that. <laughs> all right, that's all the time that we've got for this week, but uh, we'll be looking for you again next week, hopefully not in the lineup or trying to buy cocaine on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. <laughs>